Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how to avoid expensive repairs and mistakes with some very simple advice that people don't know about. Now I've seen so many mechanical screw ups over the last 55 years of working on cars, make your head spin, but these are some really big ones that you can easily avoid with just a little knowledge. Now all cars these days are really complex, they're all computer run, so they have what's called an OBD2 plug, which stands for Onboard Diagnostics. It's used to plug a diagnostic computer into the car, here's the OBD port here, and it's really simple. You just plug a diagnostic machine in here to analyze it. But it's called an onboard diagnostic port because it is for diagnosing the car. It's not made for driving with something plugged into it all the time while you're driving the car. You don't want to be driving around with one of these dongles plugged in all the time. Now, I know some insurance companies offer you a discount if you get, they call them insurance dongles, it's the same thing, it plugs in the OBD port so they can get the information about your car while you're driving it, so if you drive safe and drive less miles, you get cheaper insurance. But you should never use one of those, one of them is called Snapshot, right? You should not use them. The OBD port is an onboard diagnostic port. It is made for diagnosing the vehicle to see where a problem is or to check if there's a problem, right? Now, years ago, BMW even had a setup that when you plugged in, well, when I plugged in my fancy one, it would say on the monitor, warning, cars in self-diagnostic mode, do not drive car. They were even warning you not to drive the car with one of those things plugged in. I've had customers drive with those, they had problems with the car. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with the car. And here's why they couldn't figure it out. To analyze what's wrong with the car, we mechanics plug a scan tool into the OBD port. So, if you already have a dongle plugged in here, we have to unplug the dongle, get our scan tool, and then plug the scan tool in. We can diagnose the problems of the car. Sounds simple, right? But <laughs> let's say the dongle you had in was an insurance dongle or one that supposedly gives you better gas mileage. There's a lot of crap out there, right? We had to unplug that device to plug ours in because there's only one OBD part, right? I've seen so many people bring me a car and say, we took it to the dealer and they couldn't find out what was wrong. Well, the dealer didn't do it right because once they unplugged that device, it's no longer interfering with the vehicle and if it's causing the problem, the problem will be gone. So it has to be checked out correctly like this. Okay, this is called the breakout box because this plug plugs into the OBD port, then it has a plug here and a plug there. So to diagnose a problem correctly that has a dongle already plugged in, you plug this into the OBD port. We would plug the dongle that the customer had. We would get our scan tool and we would plug the other end of the scan tool to this side right here. The customer's dongle is connected to the system, so is mine, and I can analyze the problems. And then if I see there is a problem, right? It shows a problem. I would merely disconnect the customer's dongle from the system. So if the problem shows up with the dongle plugged in on my breakout box and I take the dongle off and the problem goes away, you know the dongle is creating the problem. They often will and they're insidious. Sometimes they'll work for months or even a year and then they'll screw the whole system up. So please, don't plug anything into your OBD port excepting an analyst tool when you are scanning the computer to try to find out what the problem is. Do not drive around with something plugged into it. I know it's handy, but you can destroy your car using such a thing. Don't do it. Don't ever drive with one of those dongles. Your insurance company advises it. I'd say get another insurance company. They don't know what they're talking about. I have seen them ruin people's cars and then the customer had no recourse. One customer did it. He contacted the insurance company. They said, ah, oh, there's no way our machine could have done that. You can't say that. If you have an electric machine and you're plugging it into the computer, system. All kinds of problems can arise. Most of this crap is made in China. If the dongle isn't made right, if the software is wrong, and even if you can use one of these cheap dongles made in China just to analyze the problem, my advice is don't. Don't buy one of these $19 ones. It can destroy your car. Believe me, I've seen it destroy people's cars. I've seen people plug them in. They take them out and they're driving and a check engine light comes on. They have codes that they never had in the first place. You can use one of these. There's decent ones 
like Blue Driver, the Canadian company. It is made in China, but the Canadians design it. It's a pretty good system, Blue Driver. And it's, you plug this in, look on your phone, on the Blue Driver app, gives you a lot of information for like a hundred bucks, right? Those are okay, but stay away from the $20 ones. I've seen them for $9.99. Don't buy those. If you destroy your computer system and it costs you thousands to fix, you wish you listened to my advice. Now, the next thing I'm gonna warn you about is, as simple as it comes, don't have a dirty air filter. Here's the problem. Most modern cars don't need the maintenance that they used to. They don't have such thing as tune-ups, grease fittings, none of that stuff. So most people just drive them and they don't do any maintenance at all other than changing the oil and filter. Especially if you got something like this Toyota Matrix, it's basically an SUV version of a Toyota Corolla. Originally it was called Toyota Corolla Matrix and they shortened it Toyota Matrix. I had a customer bring me one the other day and it was running like crap. It would idle okay, but when you accelerated it, it lost acceleration. The checked engine light was wrong and I'm like, hmm, it's a basically a Toyota Corolla. What could possibly be wrong? So rather than waste my time doing a million checks, I just popped out the air filter. And here's what it looked like. I doubt if it had ever been changed. Now you can tell this one's horrible because it's all black and dark full of dirt, but the best way to check it is to put it up to the sun. There's the sun and look. It's black. You can't even see the sun through it, right? I mean, it's totally black. For every gallon of gasoline you burn, one gallon, you use 1,471 cubic feet of air. That's a lot of air, right? If your air filter's clogged up, you can't suck the air in. It will not run right. Now, modern cars are computerized, so they keep trying to compensate. So for a while, even as it's getting bad as this, the car still runs. But eventually, in his case, the check engine light runs in. It runs like crap, and you'll fail an emissions test. So the simplest thing on earth, check your air filter every once in a while. It's easy to do. You can buy it yourself and do it, and it'll save you a lot of hassles in the long run. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about, no, it's not motorcycles or dogs. It is tires. Now, realize you're driving down the road on your tires. You actually ride it on air and rubber. Now, you look at these, you think, Oh look, they got tread on them, they're good tires. But no, these are extremely unsafe motorcycle tires. Because they're the original tires on his motorcycle and they're 12 years old. Yeah, they still have lots of tread, but as they age, the tires get too hard. When they get too hard, they don't grip. You want a relatively soft tire on a car, and especially on a motorcycle, if you're gonna do any kind of serious driving. And when you look closely, you see all the inside, there's cracks everywhere. It looks good from far away, but it's old. Now, I'll put these Italian Pirelli tires on. See, the inside's all clean, they're not cracked. These are nice racing tires. And I was totally shocked at how much better the motorcycle rode with that. Motorcycles, you got two wheels. You get a problem with either one of them, it's kaput. You don't want to get a flat tire. You don't want it to slide. You want to have nice, gripping tires. You don't ever want to drive a motorcycle with really old tires. They'll skid, they might blow out, and it's all over when you lose one of two tires when you only have two on the whole thing. Imagine if you had two blowouts at once in a car, and even then it wouldn't be as bad as one blowout in a motorcycle. A few times I bought something that's Italian. These are Pirelli, these are very good tires, but even then, they weren't made in Italy, they were made in Brazil. And they do a pretty good job. I mean, let's face it, this is a Triumph motorcycle, right? It's supposed to be English. This baby was made in Thailand. They actually do a much better job building these things in Thailand than they ever did in England. The factory in England burnt down. Who knows what's behind that, but they rebuilt it in Thailand. It's not like, I don't know, 12 British guys, engineers and stuff, but now they build these in Thailand. They are much better than anything the British built. It doesn't leak oil. It starts with the push of the button every time. It has Cayenne Japanese fuel injection system. <laughs> it's hilarious because it says Triumph Great Britain. Hey, <laughs> this thing was made in Thailand. Check it out. Japanese spark plug wires and GK. <laughs> and just to prove a point, okay, this thing's been sitting for months when I was in Rhode Island. Turn the key. The fuel pump's priming. Push the button. A bike made in Great Britain wouldn't work that way. <laughs> so really, especially in a motorcycle, but even in a car, look at your tires. They may have a lot of tread, but if they're cracked, and in this case, if they're 12 years old, <laughs> time to say goodbye and get new tires. This is one time when being cheap is not a good thing. I admit I'm a cheap guy, right? But you should not be cheap and be driving around a motorcycle with 12-year-old tires or even a car, you could get in a wreck. 
in the rain, you might slide, they won't work as well. Realize as time goes on, they make better rain tires. So the tires today work better than the rain tires of years ago. So you're gonna be safer with the new designs anyway. There you have it. Three very simple things. It's gonna save you a fortune in possible future repairs. It's gonna save you a lot of money in gas. If your air filter's clogged up and you might fail the emissions test, you might go to a dishonest mechanic, unlike me. I would say, hey, all you need was an air filter. They're gonna say, oh, well, we spent four hours working on a car. You owe us $900. All they did was change the air filter. And of course, it may save your life if you drive it on old, cracked out tires and are too cheap to buy new ones. Hey. I'm a cheapskate too, yes, but there's sometimes when you're better spending a little money having quality tires so you're not putting anyone's life at risk. Because let's face it, most of us want to live free. We don't want to die. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.